www.tramendo.com
I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We don't want John or Dean or Harry. Let's do that big job right. Let's get in step with the guy that's up. Get in step with I. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. Vote for Eisenhower. Why do you like it? I really like the bold colors. I like the childlike quality of it. Um, I like how it's kind of up to the viewer's interpretation as to like what it is. So I think it's really cool. My favorite piece of art is the funerary urn. Why? Because he looks very meditative and peaceful. Hi, Say. Hi. <laughs> what is the most rewarding part about being on the magazine team? Um, I think that the magazine always looks different than how we like initially envision it. And it's really cool to see like that process. It's almost like putting together a puzzle, like all these different pieces, and then getting to see it all together. And what's your favorite spread from the last one? Um, my favorite one from the last one is 10 ways to make the most of a new museum. Why? I really like this because it was a creative collaboration between all members of the team and it's a really interesting way to get the campus community kind of interested and involved with the Wellen um, and also just like a fun page and spread to look at. <laughs> what is the most rewarding part about being on the magazine team? The most rewarding part is getting to see all of our hard work printed out and also just like seeing how our collaboration comes together. What's your favorite spread from the last magazine? My favorite spread <laughs> is our collage page and it goes with the upcoming dates. What's your favorite? Why do you, why do you like it? Um, I really like how we use art from the Wellen and it really shows like how much you can do with art and I really like that it's interactive and students can make their own collages.
think we have a bit of a camera thing. There we are. Hello, Hamilton and anybody else who's watching. Um, what do we have today? Um, let's see. So, the other day, I uh, got an email for uh, from the army uh, recruiting me and uh, or looking to recruit me, and um, that was that was really a wake up call for me to just kind of uh, hit the books because you know it's always a bad sign. Um, no disrespect, but the it's getting harder and harder to defend them. So basically, you have. Army recruitment techniques, like... Basically, video games manufactured for teenagers, marketed towards teenagers. And it is basically saying, hey, if we ship you out 3,000 miles across the earth, uh, it'll, be, it'll be just like Call of Duty. So, that's like... I mean, I could see myself 16 years old, I'd be like, oh, like, wow, it's just like... Um. It's just like my favorite uh, pieces of media, you know? And, and I mean, we're already inundated with that. I mean, like, we basically, we have a war and then Hollywood comes in once that war's over and makes a movie about that war. And it's just this constant, you know, chicken and the egg situation. Who really knows? And uh, the other more recent, because the video game thing's been going on for quite a while, trust me. Um, They've been, they finally got into TikTok using um, e-girls that are, are giving a false impression of the, maybe the, the, the kind of people, the kind of women that you, that you would come across in an army career. Um, and that's to say they're not going to be like super photo, I mean they're soldiers, they're not like, it's not a beauty pageant. Um, so that's pretty crazy. And also, these people have been proven to be part of the Army's Psychological Operations Unit. So, um, just keep that in mind, that this is not a accurate representation of anything. And, um, they're setting you up for disappointment, or worse. So, you know, that got me thinking. You know, psyops, all that. And, um, so I saw a video one time where it was basically an experiment, um, it was like, how much sawdust can you put in a cookie before people start to notice that there's sawdust in there? And people really couldn't taste the difference until it was about 70% sawdust. So I think, I mean, considering the, considering the fact that microplastics are now in about 90% of soil worldwide, it might be a good um, way to get our feet wet with the idea of consuming plastic by, by doing something similar. Like what's the maximum percentage of microplastics that can be in any food before somebody notices? And uh, I don't have a lot of faith that it's gonna be, um, I, 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 feel like, I feel like it's gonna take a, quite a bit of plastic to um, get us to really say anything. So CIA, if you're listening to this, just uh, hit me up. I mean, you can take the idea. Uh, you don't have to give me credit for it. It's probably better that way. Um, so yeah, and then another thing that is pretty cool is, um, that basically we're, we're inundated, like, well, I mean, this is, this is hypothetical, could be, could be really useful, is, um, basically have, have news and everything basically talking about every atrocity around the world that's happening all the time. No less, no fewer than 10 atrocities a day. Um, and so this is great because it keeps people afraid, keeps people malleable, and um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a state of perpetual warfare, you know, uniting everybody against a common enemy. But there's like a hundred different enemies at once, and they're all changing. Um, so this this confusion, um, I mean, first of all, this basically gives the public opinion green light to uh, you know the U.S. anywhere there's a problem, the U.S. just jumps in. That's what we're here for. Um, and so basically, it, uh, 
It can also be utilized kind of like how Russia weaponized vodka in the Soviet Union and in, uh, before that, in Imperialist Russia. Basically, if your most marginalized groups are constant, or the, the proletariat is constantly drunk, um, or hung over, or just working, they're not going to have much time to think about, hey, like, what's, you know, what can I do to, you know, big picture change this situation? It's, uh, it, it's a good uh, demoralizing effect. Um, so I think, I think it, would, it, would, it would really do a good job of keeping people, like, downtrodden, submissive, um, and then, you know, you can get away with a lot. Um, so that's, you know, that'd be kind of crazy if, if that happened. Um, so, and if somebody, I mean, somebody brings up economic issues, there's, there's about, or really any issue, um, in order to kind of keep the status quo uh, in place, you just, you either say, we don't have the budget, um, which, I mean, it's, it's a lie, because at this point, the American deficit slash just total debt is, I mean, it's monopoly money at this point, so why, why, why do we, why do we even bother trying to justify, it? like, why don't, why don't we just double down? Um, and another cool thing is, like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get, I don't want to get political. Um, yeah, so, um, another thing that would be, like, just a fun idea is, is, like, to basically sell real, like, natural food that doesn't have plastic in it, sell it at a premium, um, because, you know, it, 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 I mean, you just need to convince people it's a luxury. So, so, um, yeah, the corn industry, that's another thing, um, that, you know, it's, 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 I'm glad, I'm glad we're doing everything we can for corn here. Um, that's great because, because what I love is that it's a corn syrup, specifically high fructose variety, is a cheap alternative to normal natural cane sugar. Um, which I know sugar is bad, but whatever, like, it's the same idea, but with high fructose corn syrup, the, it's a, it's a foreign concept to our bodies, okay? It's, um, our liver doesn't know how to process that, so it's basically being overloaded with this stuff. And, um, if it can't convert all of it, it just turns into fat around your liver. So that's, so that's like, that's pretty cool. And it also increases your appetite, so, um, you know, you can feel prepared to run that run that drive-through one more time. Um, but that's not all. It also alters a variety of um, genes that are linked to a fun array of mental illnesses. So, um, I mean, I gotta say, I'm pretty thankful. Uh, I, when when else in the history of the world have we been able to? taste spiritual and mental decay in so many different flavors. My favorite is blue raspberry. I don't know about you. Um, and yeah, so, so, so I think, I think, um, thinking of that, I, I think like, it's cool that, uh, you know, the goal of agriculture now is, is to just do, I mean the goal of every company, but agriculture, I'm glad that industrialization has uh, had its way with agriculture because um, now, you know, we, we can get food for, it, it's just so much, it's so much cheaper. Um, I mean, yeah, it has like eight times less vitamin C in an orange than it did 80 years ago. Um, but think about it like this. All that money you saved on that orange you just bought, head to CVS, get a vitamin C supplement. Better yet, get a multivitamin, um, which is rich with, you guessed it, corn syrup. And, um, uh, yeah, so another, like, I think that the workplace is a really important, uh, facet of American life. And, um, 
that should be the most I mean that, that that's that's really where where people need to uh, feel at home um, you know the, the, the workplace is the new living room and um, you know like it's great to have a fireplace but you know that produces smoke it's co2 whatever ozone like so I've always preferred the just the white fluorescent lights. Just give me those, I'm good. Um, what's cool about those is it's kind of trippy because it's like it flickers just slow enough so that you can tell when it's off and when it's on, but just fast enough to feel like you're hallucinating it. Um, so that you're guaranteed to, you know, your mental health is only gonna improve from there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's a really good way to, again, just keep people nose to the grindstone. Uh, keep keep pumping out spreadsheets. Um, so, yeah. That's, I mean, a good segue from this is um, basically that if you're ever, if you're ever in the position where you might be getting robbed, you just you just have to. So what I did, I was you know walking by my lonesome one night, um, and a group of well-meaning young men um, they approached me, and uh, you know they 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 wanted to get to know me. They seemed I mean they seemed friendly. I I'm a friendly guy, um, but then I mean they they got a little. They got a little pushy. Um, about they wanted to wanted me to pull out my wallet. Um, they were asking about like the watch I was wearing and and my shoes. And uh, so here's what I did. And this this is honestly this is what everyone should do. And this is why financial education is so important. You tell them, okay, I could give you a temporary depreciating asset, hard cash. A credit card that I'm going to cancel in as soon as I leave the vicinity. A watch that is not worth that much. Um, or, or I could teach you how to become a real estate mogul in less than five days. And um, you know, people like the media wants you to think that real estate uh, forex and uh, like commodities, rare fish. They want you to think that it's, you know, it's just for the, the, the fat cats. But that's, that's, where, that's where everybody's wrong. And even the common man can get started today and create a financial future that they can be proud of. So I, and you know, I said that, I delivered my spiel just like that. And I said, gentlemen, the lessons I will dispense to you in the next, over the course of the next three weeks will be more than worth their weight in gold and far more than anything I could ever give you right now. And um, they were like, wow, that's, that's, um, they, I mean, they just, they, they understood and they, they, they understood my perspective and they're like, wow, um, that's, that's brilliant. Um, and, and so now, you know, um, I actually, we still stay in contact to this day. So it's, it's, um. Just something to keep in mind. How long have I been doing this? Couple minutes. Yeah, um. Yeah, that's kind of crazy about, uh, what Kanye said. Um. I mean, you know it's bad when Alex Jones is trying to tell you to, you know, he's trying to give you an out. Um, so I think that's, I think that's really, um, I don't know if there's any coming back from that for old, uh, for old Yeezy, but we'll see. I think that's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Do you?
You want a man for president who's seasoned through and through. But not so doggone seasoned that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. Do you like a man who answers straight? A man who's always fair? We'll measure him against the others and when you compare. You cast your vote for Kennedy and the change that's overdue. So it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. Yes, it's Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. Stevenson today. 